And so that taught me additional lessons of <laughs> Sorry, bro. No, no, God, okay. Okay. Today, nowadays, there are so many different opportunities out in the world to be able to make money. It's endless. And you have to be honest with yourself on whatever project you're trying to enter. What is that supposed to be for you? Hello to everyone, Anatoly is here and welcome to the next episode of our Econ Business Podcast. And today I have a guest, one of my friends and a really great person, especially in terms of mindset, what he went through, what he has in his inspirational stories from the background, which he'll share today. And plus he is as well from e-commerce, he's managing his own eight figures uh, brand and agency as for now. Plus he was a business owner of the really huge agency with 3000 plus customers. And he just decided to get out of it and managing the e-commerce business. I believe we're gonna be speak about that today as well. And currently he's uh, the CEO and co-founder of Now One Venture, which is an e-commerce uh, uh, business and how uh, which is handling several retail uh, direct to customer stores and that's gonna be uh, wonderful to hear for you what exactly they are doing how they are doing that and what kind of problems he have got in the past and how he was able to uh, uh, to overtake them because like in our days the most important for you guys to be not just inspired but as well have a steps how you can overtake the problems which you have and i believe uh, steps which you'll share with you i had as well in my experience and that's exactly what's making the entrepreneurs are different from the average people because they just taking action they just following what they believe on and what is right for them and uh, he will be sharing with you and for him his main goal it's really he hopes to inspire people around the world to take the action and do not be scared of the all the obstacles which is we have in front of us so let's welcome our guest today malik yerk what's up my man how are you doing today hey man i'm doing great thank you for having me on here uh, Malin, first of all, I really uh, like uh, love uh, the background which you have and I believe this kind of episode will be inspirational and at the same time action, uh, having actionable steps which is will help so, several people out there to overtake different obstacles in life. And thank you for being with us on t- this time. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to uh, dive into this and, and share some cool experiences, um, you know, similar to you, it's all about adversity and, and pushing through whatever challenges that we encounter. So, uh, thanks for having me. Awesome. So Mila, let's start it from really uh, your background because like you now you're managing a great company, which is making really good results for uh, e-commerce stores and uh, having recruiting income uh, from uh, especially uh, like uh, your partnership with the Mallet, uh, with the Greg helps uh, understanding that recurring income on the retail and dropshipping businesses are more than possible. So it's wonderful it's amazing the way of uh, running business uh, it's having huge value but you have got before the agency of 3000 plus customers with over 70 employers what has been happened that you decided to change your direction and completely pivot with such kind of from such kind of huge uh, achievement to something new which is now as well a wonderful but i'm just really curious how uh, what was the main point from your end that you decided just to pivot to another direction? You know, growing up, um, we didn't have a, a whole lot, right? And I always wanted to, I always wanted more in life. You know, when, when I look back, there was some, there were some personal things growing up that I encountered that um, led me to a place in my life where, you know, I decided whether whether I was going to continue the path that I was going down and which was getting in trouble all the time. And, you know, eventually it was just going to end up leading me a life of living in prison. Right. And essentially growing up in prison um, versus, you know, taking a different direction. When I, I live in Orange County, so when I look out, you see, you know, million dollar homes and you've got Laguna Beach, very wealthy people. And, 
you know, I looked at that life and I said, do I want to live a life of being in jail or do I want to live a life creating something that, that can be more? And, you know, you always saw like Google, you saw a lot of like, I, I grew up watching like movies uh, like Boiler Room and a lot of sales movies, Wolf of Wall Street and things like that, that always like inspired me. And I was like, gosh, I, I really want to be able to like eventually get to a place where I, I'm, I own my own agency or I own my own sales floor. Cause I got into telemarketing, I got into phone sales and any business that I was always part of, I, I, you know, did really well in, um, I was always one of the top closers. And so eventually I worked for a marketing agency back in 2012, 2013. And, uh, that's when I first got into marketing and I started off at the, at the bottom of the sales floor and I was just a telemarketer cold calling different businesses. And Within about two years, I grew. Um, I, you know, grew pretty high up in the in the company, and um, eventually ended up running operations overseas and building sales floors and call centers overseas for them. One day, I came back and and I got let go from from the company. My girlfriend at the time was pregnant, and I was told, "Hey, thank you for doing such a great job, but unfortunately, your job is no longer uh, needed." And so I got let go and. Um, Essentially, when I came home, I was like, what am I going to do? I could go work for another company, but I felt like a lot of marketing companies and agencies just weren't really like providing the quality of service. So that led me to just out of my living room, pick up the phone and just start cold calling local businesses off of Yelp and selling them marketing services. And I did that. And then um, within about two years, I built that agency to about 70 plus people and over 3000 clients, which was fantastic and was something that I always thought that I wanted to do. And here I was in this big old office, um, over 8,000 square feet, having all these salespeople working for me, customer service and all these clients. And the one thing that I, I, I took away from all of this was um, how I was compromising on myself. And I went through a lot of hurdles with the agency, right? When you have that many people working for you, I never had experience with that many people working for me. I never had a company of that size. And so I dealt with a lot of different hurdles and challenges and obstacles along the way, which ultimately, you know, uh, unfortunately led to a place where, you know, I had to shut the business down. I went through litigation, um, bad partnership. And um, unfortunately I had to let everybody go, which was one of the hardest things I ever dealt with. And so, going through that process and for anyone that's listening going through litigation going through lawsuits is just mentally and physically exhausting and draining and no one really wins at the end of the day besides the attorneys but in business i think it's important to you know be mindful and understand that it comes with building a business and there's always a possibility of dealing with lawsuits and dealing with litigation but it should never be something that prevents you from entering the space because owning your own business and entrepreneurship is a very rewarding um, vertical to be in so to say and so as i took a year off after going through the lawsuit and going through what i did i was so reflecting and as i was reflecting i asked myself what would i not do again because i knew i needed to get back into the business i needed to build something else i needed to have more income coming in what do i want to do and how do i want to do it and one of my biggest things that as i reflected was you know at the time i compromised i sacrificed a lot of time with my daughter she was a newborn and i missed out a lot of time because i was, I was building my agency and so as i looked back i said I built a business or I built a, uh, a business around my life, right? Or I built a life around my business, so to say. And I was working 14 hours a day, always in the office. I would come home and I missed out a lot of time with my family, doing the things that I wanted to do, exploring and really experiencing life. And so as I look back and as I was reflecting, I said, you know what, what kind of life do I want to live? Uh, what does that look like? And I knew that I wanted flexibility. I knew that I wanted to be able to travel. I knew that I wanted to be able to spend more time with my family, with my kids. And I had non-negotiables. And so I said, okay, if this is what I want from my life, what kind of business supports that? And so that led me down a road to build a business around the lifestyle that I wanted versus the other way around, which I feel like a lot of people, especially new up and coming entrepreneurs, 
you know, that's something that they don't consider. And so that's something that I learned and I dabbled into a few different industries. I looked into real estate. I looked into e-commerce. I looked into, you know, flipping cars and lots of different industries, bought a lot of different courses. And ultimately I felt like e-commerce was going to be the thing that was one going to support the life that I wanted to create, give me that flexibility and that freedom and equally be long-term and be, you know, scalable. And, um, I had a, I had my best friend that, uh, his name's Greg, which is now my, my business partner. He had his agency and he was running it and he was starting it up. And I spent six months convincing this guy that he should, you know, not pursue having an agency and having a bunch of clients and instead enter the e-commerce industry with me and let's build a business together. And so for six months, I was in his ear convincing him like, this is the potential, like here are the potentials, here's the future. Like I wholeheartedly believe like this is what we should enter. And um, one day I just built the store, plugged in a couple different different products in there. And I said, hey, here's the product. I've sourced it. I built the store. um, And since you know how to run Facebook ads, why don't you just run Facebook ads? And so he was like, okay, well, I can do that, right? And he got into it and he did it. And uh, interesting, and, uh, interesting enough, we lost $800 um, running ads for that product. We made no money, but we sold, we had a sale come through one day. And the first, that moment of hearing that cha-ching sound instantly was like this liberating feeling of like, wait a minute, did this just happen? It, changed everything because we were like, wait a minute, did we just sell something to someone somewhere around the country without ever touching the product or talking to the customer? And it was like, holy smokes, like this really has potential, right? Uh, From my industry, you know, I always like picking up the phones and having to deal with sales and uh, customers and, you know, you name it, like it was always a thing, having people working for me. And this was a very like, I guess, um, eye-opening experience of like holy smokes like just the two of us plugged in a product you know and essentially we just drop shipped it right we didn't hold any inventory we didn't because for me it was like I don't, how can i build a business without having to over leverage myself right when you hear about a lot of people getting into the e-commerce business they go do some research and then they go spend all this money on buying inventory they'll all spend all this money on you know putting their logo on the products and and finding a warehouse or having it shipped to their house and having to go through all this fulfillment and all this stuff. And now, you, you know, before someone even really got a chance to even learn the marketing, which I think is the most important part of the business is sales. Any business, sales is the most important thing, right? Marketing is the most important thing. You have to know how to drive marketing, how to drive traffic, how to get sales coming in, because that's the lifeline of your business. And so, um, I didn't want to over leverage ourselves, right? And so I came across this concept of tra- drop shipping, which was you can be the middleman. Someone else can do the fulfillment for you and all you need to do is sell the product to the customer, provide the shipping and customer information to the fulfillment center and they will ship it out to the customer. And so we did this, we, we were like, holy smokes, this is amazing. And that is what started our journey uh, in 2000 and gosh, 18, end of 2018, uh, going into 2019. And so now here we are three years, three and a half years later. Uh, and it's been absolutely the most amazing thing that we've, we've entered. Amazing. So definitely now I understand you uh, quit the uh, agency business, not just because like it doesn't work out or whatever. It's about your internal feelings. And especially I feel you about what you were saying about the daughter, because I started e-commerce business in the, the beginning with the store because of my son. And when I found out that my wife is pregnant, so completely feel what you're speaking about. They become your friends. They become your family members, what, let's say, uh, and they become your best people who you're talking on the daily basis and here you have to say them bye what have you feel in that time what was your <clears throat> really my uh, mental position anytime I, I, I reflect and look back on it it's it's still a very um, 
So I'm, I'm, I'm an empath. <laughs> and so it's, it's definitely something that weighed heavy on me. And even when I look back to this day, it was absolutely one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. Um, and especially because when I was going through the litigation at attorneys and I was going through everything, I was, I wasn't necessarily allowed to talk about what was happening. Right. Um, I cared about every single person that ever worked for me and I, anyone that ever worked for me, I, I took a huge weight that it was, was being, uh, was on my shoulders because I was, um, I felt responsibility on making sure whoever they were supporting. So not only making sure that they got paid, but whoever that they, the family, the people that they were supporting was also my, my responsibility in some capacity, right? I created this space where people came in to be able to make money and to be able to pay for the things that were important for them. And so I felt responsibility for that. And so when things happened that I, I unfortunately was under, um, wasn't aware of, and I had to deal with lawyers and, and going through what I did, um, leading me to the road where I felt like there was no other option and I had no choice but to let everybody go. It was very, very difficult. Um, now, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I think one of the things that we'll, we'll you know, we can take away from this and for anyone that's listening is my experience is just my experience, but everyone goes through different hurdles and challenges, right? And their own sets of difficulties um, doesn't make mine any more or less than yours. However, the one thing that we can all agree on and reflect on is that we managed to get through those things. And as the, we've managed to get through those things and we look back on it, we can take away some good things about those, about what happened. And we can learn a lot from the things that have happened for, for us in the past. And, you know, we, one of the biggest things is also understanding that, wow, what, whatever happened then was meant to happen because here I am today doing X, Y, and Z. I completely understand what you're saying, but I see even in your words, in your tone, even in your eyes that how painful it was. Uh, the reason why I ask you this particular question, because I'm the agency owner. I'm the agency owner and I know especially like I'm Ukrainian and most of my teams are Ukrainians. And when I'm trying just to imagine, like I will tell one day, fuck it, like, you know, I don't want that anymore, whatever. Uh, how many, especially in our days, they are rely on me. How, how, how big responsibility on my shoulders, especially today we have got the team call, like 30 people on the call. We like uh, seeing each other on the cameras and like uh, now I'm trying to imagine like if I would say in one day, which is it could happen with any kind of business that guys like, sorry, like we are done. It, it's hard. <laughs> I cannot even describe. There is no word to describe that pain which is I have seen in, in your voice uh, while you were answering. Thank you for be home, being honest, to be honest, so like you, who you are. And I love that. Uh, can you tell me, please, when you were uh, now, like when you were switching to the e-commerce side since 2018, uh, how that was affected uh, on your family life? Is it become how you were looking for? or it stays the same, like you have to work several hours. I'm not speaking about now, I'm speaking about first couple of years because people are thinking, okay, he done that stuff. So he went to the e-commerce and it's instantly give him like four hours work week, let's say <laughs> the perfect scenario. But I don't believe that it was that easy for you that uh, any kind of new uh, adventure always takes time. So how was that for you when you switch uh, together with Greg into this direction. One of the most important questions that you can ask yourself before you enter any space is what is this supposed to be for me? And what I mean by that is, is this going to become your primary source of income? Is this your business that you're building? Is this going to be a company that you're building or is this going to be a side hustle? Today, nowadays, there are so many different opportunities out in the world to be able to make money. It's endless. 
And you have to be honest with yourself on whatever project you're trying to enter. What is that supposed to be for you? Like I said, is it a side hustle or is it going to be a company? And if it's going to be a company, then you have to treat it like a company. And if you want to start a business, a legitimate real company and a real business that you can potentially sell off later down the line, it's going to take real work. It's not something that you can just do a couple hours a day. You're going to have long hours, late nights. That comes with the territory of building a business, right? And when Greg and I got into this, there was a lot of different learning curves, right? But my, my view on this was this is something that's going to support my family. This is something that's going to support our lives and our, our needs and the future, right? And so when I look at it that way, I instantly, I'm like, okay, it's not just me. It's all of us, right? And when you look at there's how many people that are involved in, in what you're building, like myself, my wife at the time, my kids, Greg, you know, our families. And so when you consider all of that, you know that this is not something that just by making a few thousand dollars is going to be sustainable and support everyone, right? And um, you, when, you, when you understand that, then you realize that, okay, you got to put in the real time and effort and energy into this to build it to where it needs to be to ultimately support everybody. And so we had very, very long hours, you know, we knew from the beginning, uh, especially because of our history and my past experience, I knew how reoccurring revenue was going to be vital in our business because as I went through my litigation and I went through everything that I went through, having money coming in every single month, month over month, helped me get through a lot of the different valleys that you go through in business, right? Um, and it happens, right? Life is very unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen in a month from now, let alone, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone a month, um, uh, six months from now or a year from now. So making sure that you have it, almost like insurance, right? Making sure that you have something that's there in times of necessity is important. And so as we're building this thing, it was like, let's figure out how we can sell this product somewhere, you know, figure out the marketing. Once we figure out the e-commerce industry, let's figure out how to implement reoccurring revenue into this. And so, you know, even then the idea really came from, you know, looking around us at different businesses that already have been doing it very successfully. And the number one business that came to my mind was Costco, right? You really just get access to Costco, right? You pay a annual membership fee to be able to walk in through those doors and just shop, right? That's it. And um, and we knew like right away that that was going to be a simple, easy thing to be able to implement right away uh, into the business. I would tell you some, something from my personal experience that majority of the people in e-commerce uh, starting their stores, having success, understanding how things are working and starting their all coaching programs because of the demand people asking them or starting the agencies because of demand that people asking to manage uh, stores for them or something similar like cursing for product area. Uh, but you went opposite from agency to e-commerce. Uh, uh, which way you feel that it was really helpful for you uh, what kind of skills which you have got on the agency space helped you to build a sustainable, consistent business into e-commerce since it was completely opposite. It's not about Facebook strategies and all the stuff which you brought in the, into the agency. I believe it's something about the management or team building, but I want to hear your answer. How was that for you? I have very basic knowledge on marketing, right? And running ads. I'm not the person that's going to be in there running the Facebook ads, right? My takeaway from having my agency was business, learning how to operate a business, um, being in sales, right? Let's actually go even back further, right? When I was in the sales industry, I knew sales. I knew that getting into the sales industry, which is, I, I highly recommend everybody to get into sales, right? If you, if you can learn how to sell something, you will never be out of a job. You, you will always have a way to make money, okay? Um, there's always going to be a need for someone that knows how to sell. 
And so that's, if there's one thing that anybody, if I'm listening, can take away, go get into sales. It's the best lesson and the best skill you can possibly have. And so if I go backwards, even before that, sales was the number one thing that helped create that like underlying foundation in where I am today. And learning how to do sales led me to become a sales leader and having a team and managing a team, right? And then that taught me lessons of making sure that if my team were to win and they, they succeed, then I win. It's no longer about me, it's about them. So how mm -hmm. can I show up the best that I can for my people? And so that taught me additional lessons of <laughs> Sorry, bro. We all got this. Okay. Pause, just pause. It's a great idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's, it's a real one. That. I, I yeah. believe we only got it. To be honest, it's it just like. Yeah. I, I, I was wondering in what of episodes this is will happen. You're, you're the man. <laughs> so, well, it, it was I your episode. <laughs> it, 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 I love it because that is, that is, that right there is actually you know what makes this <laughs> awesome right like look at you running this business having the podcast and you're doing it and your your kid is right there you know what i mean like that's a that's a great feeling because when we're done with this you can easily go open that door and just give them a hug you know and like that's such an awesome that's such an awesome feeling to have right and I think more people need to ask themselves the things that are important in their lives and for them and do things that support that, you know, don't make, don't compromise because there are so many opportunities out in this world. There's zero reason you need to compromise and do things that you don't want to do or things that are not in alignment with you. Yeah. I agree with you, especially when, uh, you know, because of time difference, the podcast happen in evening and uh, I'm out of my country. I'm in Portugal. So most of the time I'm working uh, at home, but uh, like I have an office, but most of the time here I'm I'm in, 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 in my office at home. But uh, you back in Ukraine, I was doing all the business in the office only most of the time. And here is with the kid on the back, back door, time difference, now, now it's 8 p.m. You know, 8 p.m. This is uh, like something what I have to spend time with him, but I like I explained to him, okay, today I'm going to be busy because of like usually he's at school when we're recording podcast. But like uh, today I'm going to be busy with work. So please just understand me well. And <laughs> I believe he done that for reason, to be honest. I'm more than sure that he done that for reason <laughs> just because to uh, push up me. But it, it, it's fine. I'm actually, I, I, I love, we definitely keep it. Yeah, it's exactly what you are talking about, about uh, why we are doing that and uh, about the spending more time with the kids. And that's what allows me, the my agency e-commerce uh, since I started because of him. He was the reason why I started. And no, none of opportunities out there. Uh, no, I mean, there is, as you said, endless opportunities around the world to make the money, but nothing won't be able to give you that kind of feelings of freedom that you can do the work at home, you can do the work in the car, you can do the work in the train, in the plane, whatever it, it doesn't matter. The, the most important e-commerce allowed us to do that, flex, uh, to make that flexibilities. And especially in your end, that you're on the uh, e-commerce uh, space, not an agency space in e-commerce where sales are coming by, the, by themselves. You have timings for the meetings, but the less of the time you like doing whatever you can, whatever you want and in whatever place you want. And that's the most wonderful thing. That's why I believe it was the smartest decision ever in my life to jump into the e-commerce place because I didn't build just a financial future for my son. I built the future mm -hmm. of being together anytime. Right. And this and is I think I it's a, one it's of the things. Absolutely. But it's still really important for, for people that are listening. Cause I think, I think the challenge that we have today, uh, in society, because we have so like, we have access to so much information. Sometimes it could actually 
mess with us a little bit like in our psychology right mentally it can it can mess with us because we we start comparing we start looking at other people and their successes and then sometimes we then you know have that way down on us because we're like well why am i not there and it's important to 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 understand and something i've personally learned you know going through this is everybody is going through a different journey in a different time right and it's important to look at the people that we see in, on social media and people that have managed to accomplish incredible things and allow that to be a source of motivation for us allow that to be a source of realizing and seeing what's possible and and knowing that okay i'm going to go down this journey today going through the sacrifices and the challenges that come with it and knowing that as long as i continue to move forward i will have my own set of results similar to how they've managed to have what they have today because you know when we ask some of our our mentors and some of the people that we look up to you know questions of like you know how do you feel today or and look at the things that they've managed to accomplish today and what are you doing today i think it's more important to know what they did to get to where they are not as much as where they are today if that makes sense right what are, what are the some of the struggles and challenges that you overcame just to normalize that we all go through it we like to talk about our wins we like to talk about our successes and we you know we show it right to the world and we share these things but it's important to to ask the questions to normalize like hey this person that is this you know 10 million dollar guy this 50 million dollar person they went through shit they went through going through stuff to get to where they are today right and right on their level right it doesn't matter how much money you make what level you are you're on you deal with shit at the end of the day everybody deals with shit it's just a different type of shit depending on where you're at right more money more problems sure you just deal with bigger problems you know that come with with that but it's all it's still fun and i think that actually as i say it's fun it's important to to look at these things as as fun right like business can be fun going through different hurdles and challenges and uh, the walls that come in in the way those things could be fun right and it's all a matter of like perception and you know how you look at certain things and how you view them you know some people can look at things that they come across and they're like oh man like i'm defeated like you know and and why is this happening to me and Dude, it's so much of it is just mental and it's so much of it is just a a, a a way that you are looking at that thing. Nowadays, I just going through what I've already gone through. I look back and I'm like, dude, everything happens for a reason. So now when something happens to me, I'm like, why is this happening for me? And it's for me, not to me, you know? And that allows me to be, you know, be able to view it differently and take away things from the situation. And at the end of the day I'm like just having fun with it. I'm like, dude, I'm going to get through this, right? And I listen to my intuition and we come up with solutions because there's always a solution. You can come up with solutions, talk to the right people, have the right people in your circle and you can actually enjoy the the journey and the process that you're going through to get to where you want to be. Yes, and uh, the word, the golden words which you have just said the life happened it for you not to you it's not trying to against you and since i changed that uh, my actually I, i never had another mindset i believe so because i feel myself that i was all the life in such kind of direction but i didn't realize what is that but i like uh, was always the same and i was trying to understand what is exactly the thing and the thing is that later on i understood that i had so many problems in life i had so many pitfalls and uh, wrong decision made that 
other people like i actually i cannot understand how that happened but later on i understood that it's like let's call that average people who are not bad no it's not about their bad they just like not ready to deal with the problems especially so often and that's why they decided to be on average seat do not make the changes in life because it's more secured it's more easy it's more healthy let's say but we have so many problems so like uh, sometimes it's like oh my god how are we gonna get out of it it's such a huge issue like from the company level on the like running from the war at that time i realized that's the real shit happening in life i mean that moment i realized that all the things in my company which i was thinking oh my god how are we gonna manage everything is manageable was before and will be after but that stuff if i will manage my manage to get out of me with my son from the war it will show me that everything is manageable one more time and that's exactly what people are not just realizing uh, as i called the average just because they don't want to deal with the shit so often and finally not figure it out how to overtake that better to take yeah, the shit sit cool. down and relax they watch the tv or youtube so right. I agree I, and, and that's that that's definitely the thing too like i think and i also believe like today the society nowadays it's just i hate to say it but it's creating weak people you know yes um, i agree with you you're so many people are just afraid of making mistakes and they, they've all you know they're those types of people have always existed but i feel like even more so nowadays right uh, because you see like different challenges and different things going on in the world, it's like causing, because you have so much access to information again, right? And unfortunately, some of the information that you're consuming plays a part in, in, you know, a negative way that you might be looking at the world. And so a lot more people are become reserved and they aren't willing to make mistakes. But life is all about making mistakes, yeah. right? Like it should and be okay them. to absolutely right because when we make mistakes we have an opportunity to learn something so funny that we're talking about this because yesterday uh, my daughter and i we sat down my son was napping and we we sat down and you know she wanted to work on some math problems so you know she was telling me like okay daddy can you like come up with word problems and can you come up with some stuff and that way like i can work on doing this and so i know like what she's learning kind of at school and so i took a couple of sheets of paper and we wrote down different equations, multiplication, addition, word problems, and added all up. And I made some things a little bit more challenging, right? And at first, like we did easy stuff and then we made it a little harder and harder and harder. And as we, we made things harder, she started, I could sense that she was almost like in her head of feeling like afraid to make a mistake because she didn't know the problem right that was in front of her so she was almost like there was there was one particular um problem that we i had wrote out that i knew was a little bit more advanced for, for her but it was simple enough that i knew she could solve it if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Right? I got she, if you just put your if you just focus so on it not, make rather, that than thinking, rather than thinking that i don't know how to do this looking at what's actually in front of you and trying to just solve it right based on the skills and things and the knowledge that you already have and so i wrote it down and everything and she looked at it and she's like i don't know this right and i'm like baby it's okay just try you know and i could sense that she was afraid to make the mistake and she got it wrong at first right and we sat down and we talked about that and that was such an amazing lesson to, to take away from it because we sat down and we looked at that and we looked at that equation that she got wrong and the biggest lesson from all of it was just giving it a chance just trying rather than going into every single problem instantly saying i don't know this you change the way you look at it and say well what do i know and how can i just give this a try and so she tried the equation again and she got that much closer to solving it and then we broke it down even more right into little little problems right so rather than looking at this big thing we broke it down in, into parts and we said let's focus on this part of the problem let's focus on this part of the problem and when we broke it down 
into different parts, the solution was a lot easier to come to. And so she managed to solve the problem. And it was just such an amazing feeling as a father to be able to share that moment with her and for her to look at that and say, holy smokes. And then the, the confidence that she gained from that moment was just an absolutely incredible moment to have, you know, and to see as a, as a, as a father. Uh, I will tell you that it's uh, kind of funny enough, but the best lessons and uh, examples, examples of the lessons we can study from our kids. And this is the example what you provided. Uh, I, I just remember now, like uh, a month ago, it started when I said to my son, Dan, from now on, you're gonna be fixing the seat belt by yourself. He said, no, I, I don't know how I cannot. I said, you will, I'll help you once, I'll help you twice, I'll show you how to do that, but you're gonna be doing it by yourself. He was, no, I don't know how, I don't know, I won't be able. <coughs> and uh, like what I was always teaching him, I said, what is helping you to fix the problem which you don't know how to do? He said, uh, understanding how it works. I said, okay, but after understanding how it works, what do you need? He, he said, practice. So how would you learn the fixing the seatbelt? By practice, pop. So let's do it. <sighs> yeah, let's try. And one time he di it didn't work through, he like become mad. I said, remember, it's all about practice. You haven't practiced enough. Let's do one more time, one more time. Now he is the first guy in the car who is just fixing the seat belt. And it's just one of the examples. And he's so proud of that. He knows how to do that. And there is a lot of things, small things when he's like, I don't know how to do that. I said, do you remember what you need to know? Yeah, I need to figure it out how it works. And after that practice. And I said, and how would you master that? Again, practice, pop. So, I, I mean, and we're looking on it, it's exactly, they don't have chance to not try it because it, it's a part of their life education. And you're looking on them like, oh my God, I don't know how to run, let's say, Google Ads. But what you need to do, figure it out and practice, practice, practice again. Simple kids lessons, it's showing us that where we becoming lost as adults, we, we, we are over complicating the simple things. Always, always. And one of my, one, as we're talking about this, something that I remember a long, long time ago I came across, which is a saying that goes something like, if you give a man a fish, mm -hmm. he eats for a day. Yeah. Teach a man how to fish and he can feed a village. Yep. And never will be hungry again. He'll it's never true. be hungry again. Right? It's true. And, yeah. and I always kind of think of that, right? And I look at myself you know, as like a vehicle and in learning different lessons and being open to making mistakes and willing to learn and then being able to share that knowledge with others. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, like the, this is this is the way how like if you are listening to us and uh, you're on the couch and like, hey, easy to speak, like eight figure business or like agency owners, they like uh, people are always like easy to speak. Come on, like we just discussed that, that everyone dealing with the different shit and most probably uh, the guy on the couch is dealing with another shit because his ass is painting and the, bed is, and the back is painting because he is not moving. So like he's dealing with his own stuff and uh, it just it depends uh, how cool it is and the journey, how cool is the journey when uh, you're doing something and trying to fix the problems and changing the situation where you are at the moment. Love yeah. that. I love the journey, man. Yeah, it, it actually <laughs> one of the like top questions, I mean, top, uh, which is last questions, which is I usually asking my guests and you like already answered it, but still, uh, what uh, would you choose? The end result or journey? The journey always, the journey always, because what you take away, the lessons that you learn through the experience, that is what ultimately can help you get achieve more results right you learn so much from those the the journey that when you achieve the result it becomes so much more rewarding because you can look back and be like look at everything that i went through mm -hmm. right look at look at all the times that i just felt like i wanted to give up right it's just it's so humbling and it's so rewarding that it's almost it's it's almost 
feels better than that payout that you get at the end of the day. That's true. I agree with you because, like, my opinion journey as well. Some people choose an end of result, end result, but I see, like, when you can choose end result in terms of, I, of people who I was talking to and asking questions, and usually it's a people who has clear goal, let's say, grow to 60 mils and exit. And they follow only that goal and they don't care about how it will come, how fast it would be there. The most important exit. So that's what they're focusing on. They don't care about the journey experience, what they will get. I got it. But majority of entrepreneurs, uh, since I'm, to, I'm talking always to you guys, to business owners, journey. Yeah. yeah. Well, during it's the journey, our too, goals man. are changing. Yeah, especially for you. Think about it in like 10, 15, 20 years from now, you're gonna be able to look back and be like, look at the journey I went through, right? Like look at yeah. the war that happened with Russia and like where I was and my people and like what I had to go through to come out on top. Like that's an incredible yeah. journey. That's an incredible experience to go through. And a lot of people have a similar experience in their own way doesn't make it more or less than someone else, but it's cool to be able to have that kind of feeling and that experience that you had seen and gone through. <laughs> you know, you said just look back, uh, like in matter of years, uh, when I will be in matter of years and looking back for this particular moment. But I just, when, when we was saying that, I just bring myself, now it's 2023. I brought myself in, 2000, or in 2013, and like, oh my God, inside I was like <laughs> shocking because 2013, October 6, I came in, the, in Abu Dhabi, no, no, no English skills, I don't, don't have anyone Russian speaker, Ukrainian speaker in Abu Dhabi. And, they, and I was in Italian restaurant as a food runner. Like I was removing the dirty plates from the uh, table and bring to the yeah. washing area. Like it was 10 years ago and e-commerce changed my life i mean i was uh, hustling during that time i be i became the manager on sales manager in the gas company before the e-commerce so the, the, there was a own hustle in terms of employment uh changing the life for better and i changed and it didn't go that way as i wish but yeah. the main thing it's 10 years the journey was insane in these 10 years and 10 years ago i couldn't even have a conversation with you I would be like completely wordless, <laughs> or like it will be me translation. <laughs> There's one thing I, I want to say uh, for those that are listening is depending on the stage that you're in today, even if you don't have a business, be the best at what you can be. So if you're out there and you're working at a restaurant and you're you know picking up and waiting and you're cleaning tables, be the best person in the business. Be the best person in the restaurant. Go above and beyond because that is the characteristics. Those are the characteristics that will make you the best that you can be for the next phase of your life. You won't always be there cleaning tables, but if you focus on the details and you go above and beyond and make sure you're doing the absolute best that you can, that's going to set your foundation up for the next stage of your life. You know, and so don't think too far ahead. Focus on being the best that you can be in whatever it is that you're doing today. That's a golden words because like in three weeks after I arrive in Abu Dhabi, three weeks, no English. I'm just a food runner. In three weeks, I was the top uh, employer in terms of work, which has to be done. And I become an assistant waiter. I mean, for me, that moment, it was like I become an agency founder, you know, <laughs> it was a huge deal for me without English. So 100 person, golden, golden words, man. Anyway, like that was one of the most spiritual and uh, mentally awesome interview, which is I had. I will be honest with you. Like, uh, as I believe even my son made this kind of uh, relaxation and right way uh, flow of the conversation. Because we went to real stuff, uh, not only about the business, what's matter for the business owners, but in the same time, what's in real life 
examples and experiences which we are having on a daily basis. And that's like, if someone would say that that was boring, like anyone has their own opinion, but I love this episode. I appreciate yeah, it. I enjoyed Mark. it too. Yeah, yeah, so we got it, Millet, I really happy to see you here and uh, I'm looking forward for the future podcast later on let's see what audience will say maybe they want to hear more about your current business which is actually Greg already shared a lot but by that time maybe we will be recorded with you and you'll share your own uh, perspective where you are at that, at that moment plus obviously we are not staying on the same step there is going to be a lot of new uh, adventures and journeys from your end which is you're going to be shared yeah, it was we got some really exciting things happening both of us you know the journey never stops and it continues to evolve and grow and uh i'd love to and be able to share more about, about that amazing and uh yeah. if, if there is any offer which you would like to provide for our audience related to your uh e-commerce recruiting uh generating revenue business which is can help them to build consistent uh, results to compare to all these up and downs flows sure. in their business. Is there anything what you can offer to them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't really dive too much into it, but I think a couple of key <laughs> takeaways from. <laughs> um, I think a couple of key takeaways. So I think a couple of key takeaways that we can have. Can you note it? Can you note it? Okay. Oh my God! I, That's why the best episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So a couple key takeaways that I guess we, we briefly touched on our conversation was, you know, in our business, we have reoccurring revenue. In my last business, I had reoccurring revenue. Having predi predictable income can be the lifeline of your business. Yes, there are other perks of how it increases your overall value of your business and you can, you can make a lot more money, but having money and income coming in in times of uncertainty is essential and very important in most businesses. And I think it's one of the biggest key reasons why a lot of businesses end up failing is because they're tied on money, right? So by having reoccurring income coming in, you can forecast and you can see into the future and know how much money you've got coming in. So I guess the offer would be, you know, my partner and I, we do a lot of consulting right now with different businesses and different brands. And we look at those that are already established and doing really well and have consistent traffic coming in and have been successful at doing what they've been doing and they're looking to grow it and so what we do is we sit down with them and we consult them we look at their business we look at what they have and we figure out um additional ways that they can create monetization through reoccurring revenue whether it's having subscription revenue coming in or membership revenue coming in having some sort of predictable income coming in month over month over month so what we can offer is for anyone that might be interested in wanting to explore that a little bit more they're going to want to reach out to me um, and what we'll do is we'll provide a consulting session uh, at no charge so we'll do a discovery call we'll do an initial consulting session um, which we typically you know charge a decent amount for so for any businesses that you know obviously are established and are doing really well are profitable uh, it would make sense for them they can reach out to me we'll do a pro bono initial discovery call we'll sit down we'll talk about their business we'll see what they've got going on how they can create additional systems and we'll explore that and then if they want to continue to do more of it and they want some guidance and they want some ha hand holding and and really for us to like open up the the door and share everything that we're doing with them we can happy to discuss some more awesome all the details of milat i will put uh, under this podcast so you'll see the social media links you can easily reach out to him or to his partner greg and easily book a call uh, and uh, with the notes that you came from our site and they will be able to assist you for free that that's the main thing because they're going to be analyzing your business and help you out with the guidance okay that that's actually a powerful offer especially for what product you're running guys like if you don't know what kind of product really milad is running with greg just watch another episode with greg he's explaining everything in details of their in, ins and outs of the uh, e-commerce generating revenue uh recurring business which is like making money from the air so don't miss that episode as well and millet 
I appreciate for your time. I appreciate for this awesome conversation. And I have seen you from another way as a real person. Like we were having deep conversation about life. I appreciate you and have a wonderful day. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you too.